Hi everybody, I hope you're all doing well. I'm doing a 30 minute session for a client. I'm gonna be sharing distance, psychic wisdom, and energy healing. So our focus today, this client is requesting energy work for internal struggles, asking for some help to navigate the way that they're feeling. So I wanna thank you, the client, so much for an opportunity to support you today. Can't wait to see what we discover here. Really honored to, um, I don't know, help you conquer this thing. <laughs> like you're going to conquer this thing. Okay. That's like how it's going to work. <laughs> and thank you so much for sharing with us here on YouTube. There's, there's so much that we can do to support each other. So me getting to support you and now you're supporting others. It really makes a difference. So thank you so much for that. So I'm just going to read out loud your very specific goals just to kind of hear the spirit of your own writing and then I'm going to close my eyes and get started. So you say, I'm dealing with internal struggles. I could use some energy work to help me navigate the way I'm feeling. Yeah. All right. I'm ready. I'm totally ready to dive into this. <laughs> okay, we're just going to relax here, get in the zone. <sighs> here we go. Okay. <sighs> so you're really feeling the weight of internal struggles really got your attention to the point you're reaching out for energy work. You're reaching out for some support to navigate, literally find your way through the weight of the internal struggles. So I'm just presenting this to the universe and we're going to see what echoes back. Okay. Okay. Hmm. All right. The first thing I'm presented with, it's not a very clear scene. It's not clear on purpose. Okay. And there's a thin veil that is the color red and the red is just sort of layered on top. So I can kind of see through the red, but I have no idea what's on the other side because it lacks clarity. And uh, th there is a big, what, what seems like a snail shell, it's a rounded shell and it's big. It also isn't hard like a rock and it's not hollow. It seems to be a very, just a very strange, uh, you know what it reminds me of? You know that clear glue? Um, let's just say that we somehow shaped that glue into a rounded object and then we let it harden. <laughs> it's kind of odd, okay? So we've got this red thin layer. I see through the red thin layer and I see a rounded object that kind of has a swirl aspect to it, like um, maybe going smaller and smaller into the center. But it's clear and it's got a strange texture to it and it's not hollow. This is the first thing I'm shown. So right now I'm just investigating, well, why this? And what does this mean? What does this have to do with your internal struggles? One thing too, to highlight again, it lacks clarity. Okay. On purpose. So now we need to figure out, well, how can we bring clarity forward? <sighs> when I go to touch this red, it literally is a fabric. Then I pull the fabric away. It, uh, it kind of screams at me um, like it's yelping in pain, like I'm hurting it, like I'm ripping it, ripping its flesh even. It's painful. So when I go to move this away, it just seems like no big deal to me. I'll just brush it away and so I can see what's beneath the surface. And it makes a sound and the sound is like a cry. It's a yelp. It's a shriek. And the sensation of it is you're hurting me. You're hurting me. Like you, you're literally hurting me in a way that is, it's not like, ouch, it's like uh, torture-esque. It's like ripping the flesh off the body. Oh boy. <sighs> Again, the sensation is one step at 
a time. I can't just see the bigger picture yet. And I can't just resolve the issues of the red sort of cloth that's over top. The, I mean, it's like we're still working with the same old thing. We're working with the same old thing. We're working with the same old thing. And then we try to make a difference and we can't really get anywhere new. So far, the first aspect, like the first things that I'm seeing here in your session, this is what I'm presented with. All these details are important. All right. I choose to take a role of saying my stance and I tell the red veil, this red piece of cloth, I, I say, you know, I, I'm sorry, I didn't know that it was going to be so painful. And I say to the red cloth that everything in my heart is telling me that we, we need to see what's beneath the surface. For me to see, actually see what's beneath the surface, you're actually in the way. And so I need to move you out of the way. What is so painful here about me just moving you out of the way? I don't understand how me just touching you is absolutely, unfathomably, unbearably painful. I need you to give me a little bit of feedback. Oh man, it's a total scramble. It uh, sounds like electricity. It sounds like like that and the picture is kind of um, information here from the right information here on the left and it's just kind of in a quarrel with it, each other and it looks like a cloud and it looks like some lightning bolts and electricity moving through there it's just scram scrambled it's scrambled so it can't really receive a grounded conversation it can't really explain why it is the way that it is it can't cope with the thought of understanding what's beneath the surface it can't cope with the thought of me just moving out of the way so this is all quite fragile i mean still we're baby stepping our way into something deeper it'd be nice to just dive in bam start to really see some things but we have to work on mm, slowly moving through these very sensitive layers to help you actually navigate this uh, major internal struggle, there's no doubt about it, there's internal struggle here. Okay, something's changing. I feel it inside myself. And it's, it represents th this concept that I know who I am, I know what I'm choosing, I know where I desire to go, and it's time to let go of an attachment to the suffering. It's a very strong female figure that I'm sort of standing in the shoes of. And I'm going to just sort of back away so I can see her in action. She's pretty normal looking. They, she has black skin. She... Um, all right. How do I describe... Her colors are purple... And they're kind of a teal color, purple, teal, black, and uh, kind of gray, I suppose. She has a kind of a silky dress, a shawl. She's just dressed nice, but not fancy and not really spiritual. Like you might think of a spirit guide or, um, I don't know, some sort of like being from the universe. She just, just dresses nice. But she does have a, like a turban that she's wearing in purple on her head. And I see her kind of from the back side and I see this, it's like a shawl that she's wearing over perhaps a dress. But I can't see her from the front. But she stands very simply, very strong in her, on her feet. She stands with presence, and she stands in communication with this red veil. And she tells the red veil, the time is up. She takes her hand and she places it upon the red veil. And the red veil is screaming in agony. It's like uh, putting your finger into someone's unfathomable gash and expecting them to be okay with it. That she absorbs this red veil into the palm of her hand, into her body. And the veil is just screaming inside of her. She keeps pulling it then into her heart now. 
And inside of her heart, there is this portal where that veil can find peace, where it can be supported, where it can work through that trauma. This next strange circular shell, it, hard as a, it, it's like, it's not necessarily hard as a rock, but it is a solid thing. It's, a, it's just such a weird texture, almost rubbery. And she shakes her head and she says, no, this will not do. She kind of pushes it in and it pops out like a strange door. And then the door is completely open to a, a pitch black space. Another thing that comes to me is that you're not, okay, this is what it feels like. It feels like there's something that you're not able to, you're not working on something. You need, you're not uh, working on yourself. You're not in a, in a way that's really, it, it's like I see a child that's being fed and that sensation of the child being fed is your heart being nurtured, okay? And you working on yourself is you feeding, you nurturing your own heart. That is lacking here. There's a sensation of lack, like you need to be working on your heart or working on yourself. Now, I still find that to be a vague statement. I want to go into that in more detail. Well, what, what do you mean that you're not working on yourself. Obviously you are in some way, you're reaching out for this session. You are asking for support in navigating the internal struggle. There's no doubt about it. Internal struggle is all over the place here. Baby steps to get a little bit further into because there's so much inability really to go deeper. How are you supposed to work on yourself when there's this inability to really go deeper? Because there's all this vulnerability in the process of going deeper. It's not as easy as, here's some food, kid, eat it up. Okay, great, lunch is over. No, this is, uh, this is, this is sensitive. This is really, really sensitive stuff. So I, I still want some more clarification on what that means, okay? I see that this black woman is going to be present the whole time. And I, I, there's something about her energy. There's something about what I feel like when I stand by her. I feel peaceful. I feel like she knows how to navigate your heart. And I'm very curious to watch her in action, you know, helping you with this. There's something earthy, natural, simple about her. She's not f trying to be flashy. She's clean, she's dressed nice, she's put together, she's interesting to look at, but she's not uh, flaunting some gold jewelry or uh, flaunting this unfathomable beauty. There's something about age to her as well. And I just, I just find her presence to be a pleasant feeling to me. So she shows me that on the other side of this door, it's darkness. This darkness is not easy to even have a clue where to begin. You could take a step into this darkness and you will lose the very door that you were just on the other side of. It's almost like getting swallowed up in darkness instantaneously. At the moment you choose to step into this darkness, to navigate, it's like getting swallowed up in the darkness. So you're really on point here with your goals. Okay, my guides are saying, well, you need to believe in yourself and you need to believe that you can navigate this. If you've decided you yourself cannot navigate your own internal struggles, you will never be able to navigate them. But they're really highlighting that you can take ownership that it is time that you say, I can stand up, I can face this, and I can work through this one step at a time, and I do have what it takes. So what part of you says that you don't have what it takes? We're already inside that darkness doesn't matter where the door is. We're going to face this darkness. Darkness just swallowed us right up. Hmm. 
Hmm. I feel like this represents your heart. But I'm not convinced it's all just your heart. I want to say it also represents your third eye or your mind. How much of you is swallowed up here? How much of you is not swallowed up? What is not swallowed up about who you are right now? About your personality, about your life, about love, about purpose and meaning that you can feel it, you know? It's not hidden. Because you aren't hiding it from yourself and you feel present with it. So what could you say is definitely not swallowed up? What can you say is swallowed up and why would you say it like that? This is where you should get a journal and write down some of these questions and answer these questions and that is going to help you figure out who you are right now. Because again, I'm swallowed up in darkness. How long has it taken just for me to get to this point? I should be able to dive in, bam, lots of stuff to talk about here. I'm on and on and on with new, 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 new things to talk about. But it's like, we're still on step one. Now maybe step two, okay, we're still, we're swallowed up in darkness. Okay, well, there's someone cool here that wants to help us. But it's like, it's just so slow, you know? It's gonna take time to heal this. It's gonna take time to navigate this. So, be patient, okay? Be patient with yourself. Take ownership that you are ready. You can navigate these internal struggles and now start to identify um, what is not swallowed up in darkness for you right now. Wholeheartedly brings you joy, brings you light, and brings you peace, brings you gratitude. Easy. It does it in an easy way. And now what is the tug of war? And write it down, even if it's obvious. Well, I know what the tug of war is. It's this. Okay, what what else is, is in there? What else is swallowing you up? Really get to know yourself right now. Now you're already working on yourself. You're already working on this. You actually are. You're putting time and energy into literally writing these things down and taking a look at what you're writing, reading what you're writing out loud and thinking about you, thinking about yourself and the way yourself feels. Okay, this uh, woman here, she, she's got a kind of mysterious side. Uh, something of a lightning flicker happens. And she's a walking, walking skeleton woman with the same clothes on. And then it flickers again and she's back to a whole body, okay? And then it flickers and she's bones again, walking. There's a, a part of yourself here. I don't know how to understand what she looks like. It looks like she's, she's covered in scars and her surgeries. If there's one massive scar, it seems to start, uh, let's say, by the left side. It's a huge cut, okay, that goes across the, the center of the chest. It comes down all the way down by the right, like, pelvis, okay? It comes down this leg, this right leg, all the way down to, it's just like kind of curves uh, on the leg. So it curves away from just going over the kneecap that it's this huge scar. I mean, I can see a huge scar there. It's a really long scar. And you're lying on, kind of lying across a throne chair, like a fancy, like a, a chair a king or queen would, would sit down on, but you're kind of lying across it uh, somehow. And you're naked and you represent the scar, okay? the darkness is upon you and there's a big massive window behind you and it's a night sky and sometimes it flickers out there and it shows the woman here guiding us she's uh, either full full body like full flesh or she's a skeleton this part of you flickers as well she's got a lot of anger she's 
I don't I, I wouldn't recommend a, a close relationship with this part of yourself there's something toxic about her and she's glitchy though is she toxic or is she sad like is she toxic in a bitter dark and scary way like don't mess with me or you're gonna regret it like you're gonna bite someone's head off like but not it's almost uh, there's a wickedness about her energy but it's really a sadness you know it's an it's a humongous scar that never healed properly she represents a scar okay a very long and obvious scar that is not healing. So of course she's kind of wicked because she's in pain. And she doesn't have anywhere to go. She has nobody here. She has no direction. She's swallowed up in the darkness too, you see. I can't really blame her for being herself, but she's not the kind of friend you want to make. She's the type of aspect that needs serious thorough nurture and support like re rehabilitation hardcore is she in so much pain that she's not choosing to feel the pain but starting to mess with her head starting to mess with her the balance she's kind of glitched so she's I don't know if it's madness or a choice a conscious choice to be bitter or if she even knows how to manage who or what she is, which does not relate to her to be who and what she is. What is the solution for her? Because for me, naturally, well, we'll just send some love and some light, but there, there has to be an intelligent kind of translation. Vibrationally says we need to do some more investigative work, okay? This woman, she actually, uh, her spirit goes into the scar tissue woman. Okay, so those black women with this purple turbine and this, it's like a silky garment and it's got purple and green and gray and black. It kind of looks like flowers, an arrangement maybe abstractly so, perhaps flowers or stained glass window on a shirt or something. Um, that's primarily what I see about her. As she flickers from a full form to a skeleton, well, her spirit then goes into this one with the scar who's also you here, okay? And she, she does something unexpected. She releases the red veil into the inside of the you that has the scar tissue, the scar, massive scar. And the, the woman with the scar starts to scream, just like the Red Veil did. She just screams, and it's pretty hard to watch, but she screams to the point she has a nosebleed, her eyes are bleeding, her eyes are bulging out of her head like they're going to explode. She's uh, in a lot of pain. Thing is, she's... She doesn't know how to cope with the pain that she represents. She doesn't know how to feel the pain. So she's she's choosing to like turn off the faucet of natural feelings and natural emotion. And so when the faucet finally turns on to reconcile us, it's like she's being burned alive in acid or something, eating her alive. That red veil needs to return to her. It's the part of herself that she's dismissing so she doesn't have to feel how how painful what she represents is. She doesn't have to feel her own representation of pain and suffering. So that tells me that you are consciously aware of the internal struggle. You're consciously aware of unfathomable pain. But how are you navigating the actual pain itself? Because feelings, you know, can be comfortable we we'll just choose to feel the comfortable feelings and then not feel the ones that are ripping us apart and inspiring us to make decisions that um, we're trying not to make and then we have to contain ourselves as much as possible and if we're just a representation of a scarred person alone in the back room of a dark environment and whatever 
Now that, that right there has to be reconciled. It's like, okay, so every human being, we all do, we have, we've been through very difficult times in our life. Every single human being has struggled here, okay? There's not a single human being that has not. Through those struggles, we become wise, we become role, good role models, or, you know, if we don't want to work on stuff, terrible role models, <laughs> but, but we avoid sometimes, we avoid the growing pains, and we don't really know how to work through the growing pains, and that's, we're growing through this inconceivable reality to become more conceivable to ourself and to allow reality to be more conceivable to our own perception of what it is, <laughs> all right? So we all have parts that kind of ripped off during the trauma of just living. And sometimes we just have no idea how to reconcile it. Sometimes it festers in there. Sometimes we live in the trauma. If you're living in the trauma, you're going to be quite aware of parts of you that you don't feel are familiar to who you feel you actually are. So if you feel you're a happy person, but you have this sort of aspect that's in pain and suffering, and then you have another aspect that's in pain and suffering, and another aspect that's in pain and suffering, and another aspect, you're going to feel the pain and suffering, but it's not gonna feel like that's you. And so you're gonna kind of detach from feeling that because well, you know what that's just not me i'm not that pain and suffering i know stuff has happened i'm going through a hard time i'm aware that it's there i'm not going to give into it because i'm going to keep being happy no matter what happens but now when this starts to build up in time happens and a lot has been building up in time you could become numb you, you th these are actually going to help you become truly happy because when you're paying attention to these aspects of yourself and you're actually working through the pain that you're avoiding, instead of avoiding it, you're actually working through it, it's going to feel like you're screaming. It's going to feel like agony. It's going to feel like injustice. It's going to make you so angry. It's going to make you feel like you have no solution. It's going to make the sound feel ridiculously loud. It's going to make you feel like you're behaving like somebody's lost their mind as you're just screaming and crying alone in your own house or something like this. Maybe you're in your car and you're freaking just pissed and you're just screaming in your car and it's like who is this person this isn't me i'm actually a happy person it's just my life right now you know what i mean so what's important here is we start to face this tortured aspects of you of what you've been through in life because something it you're not you don't want to open that strange door you don't it's like just leave the red veil there let's leave the strange door there don't navigate the darkness don't navigate what's swallowed up i don't know how to deal with the scar tissue of myself i don't know how to deal with her pain i don't want to be an angry person i don't want to be you know screaming type of person well you're gonna have to be what you don't want to be sometimes you're gonna have to be what you don't wanna be and it's gonna hurt and it's going to suck. You know, It's gonna be like, this is so unfair. Why is my life like this? This is really unfair because this isn't me. This isn't what I wanted. This isn't how I've lived my life. This has been done to me my, by life. I refuse to give in to what life has done to me, how it's changed me, how it's morphed me into something I don't even recognize. I don't want this. Well, the pain is still there and it's still you. And it's still waiting for you to come and help it, okay? That's why we're bringing the red veil, you know, this this wonderful woman here, she's, I don't know, is she a spirit guide? Is she an aspect of yourself? There's a higher consciousness and a leadership and understanding of her own path and her support for you. I think I think it's cool to think of her as a spirit guide, but she's of little few words, okay? <laughs> she's of a few words. Um, she doesn't say anything, but she seems to know where she's going. And let's just see what she does next, right? She's got this red veil in herself. She's bringing it to the you that is the scar tissue. You that has not been healed. And now she's releasing the red veil so those emotions can be felt in the body for where they come from, okay? And this is just an aspect of you. So she's literally, it's, I know it's, it's disturbing imagery, but that's her pain. Okay. Her pain in a picture looks like this. So you have pain inside of you that looks disturbing. All right. No wonder you need help navigating because it's going to be hard to look at. It's going to be hard to feel present with this kind of pain. So you, you really have cut yourself off from really feeling this pain because you just don't want it to be there. Well, it's there. Okay. So... 
she's not sure what to do with this pain, the scar tissue. So this black woman is still in her heart, okay? And the scar tissue woman is still lying across this throne chair. It's only big enough for one person and somehow she's using it as a bed. I don't know how she does it, but that's what it shows me. With a humongous scar that cannot be denied. She's naked. I can see the scar from where it begins to where it ends. I see it very obviously. And she's screaming with blood just dripping down her face and she's in so much pain. I can't just make the pain go away because it has to be felt in order to reconcile the wound inside yourself, okay? The pain is going to help you navigate your life. Okay. <clears throat> Here's an example. All right, let's say you have someone... This is what hits me. You have somebody and they're in an abusive relationship. They are going to stay in that relationship no matter what why though why would you stay in an abusive relationship it, some people do okay they try to navigate that for years they're going to be patient they're going to support their significant other they do whatever it takes to help them heal so that they can have a happy life together and so people persevere um, environments of real suffering and how do you think they're going to transform and change in those environments? How are they going to stay strong in their happy and joy, joy personality in the midst of, we don't know, it could be a manipulative, psychologically abusive, uh, emotionally, physically, who knows what the abuse is going to be. But that is going to do damage and it's going to cause aspects in this example, for instance, of a human being who's being patiently working through this, wants to stick it out, wants to work through this, is going to find ways to cope and to numb and the pain, they will not listen to the pain. They will not listen to the pain that says, I am in pain. You, my emotional bones are completely shattered and broken. I need rehabilitation. I need help. I am in an environment that is toxic. I'm in an environment that is killing me from the inside out. No, I'm going to ignore that. I'm going to ignore anything that the pain tells me because I am overriding it to stay in this relationship thick or thin. I don't care. And so you will find yourself becoming gloomy on the inside, becoming different than your happiness, becoming numb, becoming um, pur a purgatory person, a living dead person. Because we don't know how the other side is feeding off the love and support that's infinite, that is slowly dying and decaying in there, while nothing really changes except a little bit at a time, a little chipping away, a little bit of improvement. Might not be fast enough. So this is an example of what I'm witnessing here, where you need to be listening to the pain. You're not listening to the pain, therefore you're not going to be able to navigate this. Because the pain is going to tell you the, where the red flags are. And if you don't want to hear it, if you don't care about those red flags, if you're going to endure whatever the circumstance is, um, you know, you can do that. But you've got to be true to your heart. You've got to be true to your own energy. Not a servant to the abuser's energy. For instance, a servant to the conflict's energy. You have to be a, a servant of yourself so that you can be your brightest self every single day. And that should be nurtured on all sides of who you are and, and every pathway that you choose. And trust me, life isn't always so easy. It's like, you know, the job does it, family members, friends, relationships. Like you, sometimes we get hit on all sides by situations that don't go away for years. So how are we going to navigate it? You, sometimes we got to be patient. Sometimes you got to be forgiving somebody sometimes, but something here is saying you need to listen to the red flags, the pain and screaming inside yourself that you're closing a door and just turning it off. Like it doesn't exist. You're not listening to all that you are. You're, you have, you have to, to how are you going to heal that scar? You know, like that's there for a reason because this, this part of you is turning dark okay now that the screaming the blood's out she's starting to laugh and she's starting to acclimate to the darkness and she's starting to learn from the darkness 
trying to learn how, from the darkness how to become dark and how to work with darkness herself. And she does not want to leave this dark place. And I say, well, then you, you've already died. And instead of going to heaven, you're going to hell. Like, you're choosing to be hell. Instead of choosing to be heaven, which is the unconditional love space. Where you can scream and cry about your pain and you're held the entire time until you're nurtured back to recovery. So that you are also a representation of heaven, which is who you actually are. But if you can't mend yourself to become the heaven that you are, you could just can consumed by the pain and become the hell that you are. But hell is not pleasurable until it becomes pleasurable. And once it becomes pleasurable, you, you, that's uh, another red flag. Uh, you're not feeling the pain. You're just you're just using other tools to help you cope with something that you're you're not is not healthy. This is not healthy. Don't lose yourself, okay? Because this is a representation of a massive scar. You've lost yourself in the dark. You have no idea to navigate it because you're not feeling the pain. I'm supposed to tell you that, okay? So my like my goal here is not to create fear. <laughs> but my goal is also to show you what I'm seeing, I'm witnessing, and talk to you about because this is serious, okay? Um, but I do want to make something lighthearted about all this because I want to come full circle and help you love yourself because I still love that part of you. I love her for being just the way that she is. I love her for her nakedness. I love her for her scar. I love her for where she chose to exist inside of you. Um, I love her for enduring the pain that was really hard for her. I love her for all of her decisions because I am bringing the heaven with me. Because I am bringing the heaven with me that she actually wants inside of herself. So I can do that for her, right? So here we're going to go full circle so I can really bring that energy in. Pay attention though. Some of the things you're supposed to, to make note of is um, feel your pain. Feel your pain and that's not a weakness. It's actually going to help you come into a wholeness with your true em emotional essence. And it's going to come into a wholeness with what is harm harmony and balance and help you communicate that from a place of I don't know what you could call it diplomacy. It's like being put together and knowing how you feel and knowing what makes you feel that way. And it's your feelings. And you're taking the time to really interpret all the feelings of everybody around in order for you to really know who you are and then be who you are. Those feelings, you got to feel that stuff, okay? I don't enjoy it. I don't enjoy it either. But I don't want parts of me to become like that. And I know the, the way to ensure that that doesn't happen is to give in to the bone-breaking emotional nightmares that sometimes reality inflicts upon us. I don't want to lose parts of myself like that. I have before, and I felt that dark stuff too. And I know it's not me either, just like all the other human beings who know what I'm talking about. And that's why I have to always be in tune with what am I, what am I struggling with. What are those parts of me? What can I do to bring the heaven to them? Same with you, okay? But I'm here to bring the heaven. Because it would be hard. I, I don't want... I, something that comes to me is that this is a lot for you to do all by yourself. Um, it just... It shows me. It, it's... That's very vibrationally clear. That having some support would be really healthy. Okay. Somebody that could bring the heaven for you because how are you going to bring the heaven for yourself? You got this going on here. My <laughs> guys are like, well, Abby, you, you've done, you've done a lot of navigating by yourself. It's like, yeah, it's a long, lonely, painful road. It sucks. Like it's so much better when you, you can share this experience with somebody who genuinely freaking loves and cares about your well-being, you know? Okay, I'm going to, unfortunately, there's just another scene, okay? It's, again, another toxic scene that we need to clear out of your system. And this is, again, we're working through the pain, so it's revealing itself in a disturbing scene because it's pain, all right? Pain doesn't look pretty. 
um, and I just choose to see things for the way they are. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Basically, it's a room full of bones, and the bones are all sharpened into kind of like sticks. And there's sticks on the ceiling, walls, floor, and you it's like you live in here. I mean, you live in a spiky space where you're constantly speared by shaved bones that are like sharp um, objects that are constantly, um, you're constantly, I see it go through your feet, your your calves, your, if you sit down, they're going to go through your, your body, like they're going to go through you. If you try to lay down, you're going to be laying in these things, they're going to cut through you. There's really nowhere for you to go here that isn't going to hurt you. You're starting to open up more, by the way, because this space is really easy to access. And yeah, there's blood dripping everywhere because again, it's a space full of pain. That's what it is. So we're just present with it. We're not saying, oh, make the pain go away. It's like we need to feel it properly. And then it just disappears on its own because we acknowledged it. We felt it. Then it just disappears. And then we do the next thing. There's a uh, weird, um, they're kind of like screaming mouths that flap their wings, like bats, uh, birds, butterflies, like uh, wing flapping mouths, I just, uh, but they're mouths, okay, that kind of uh, like have, they're like in the shape of a mouth, but it kind of flaps like a, a bird. They're everywhere and they're screaming in here. This black woman's spirit is in this space and she becomes an orb of energy and she starts to pull in all these screaming sounds into her body. She pulls in all the sharp objects and you're all alone with many holes inside of you. It's just like holes that go through you. I touch this whole space with like a cosmic hand of my own. And I just place so much love and so much light upon this space. I tell you, you're doing an amazing job. Slow but sure process, but we're getting to the nucleus here. And we're getting you to a better place inside yourself. Because you're opening up to the conversation, you understand the conversation. I just ask you one more question. What are you going? What do you like? Okay, so they're asking you to just get a journal and write down, write down your feelings, write down, and you need to start really loving yourself. Like, is a you thing? It's not. It's, you are at the nucleus. You are at the nucleus. Your pain matters. Who said that your pain didn't matter? Where did that come from? I was like, you're closing, you're, you're closing yourself off from feeling pain. I feel it. Where, where do you put your pain at? Can you talk about your pain? Are you allowed to have pain? Are you allowed to be in pain? Is that to yourself? Is that to others? What is the environment? And what is pain in your environment? Are you not allowing yourself to feel the pain because you're going to be stronger than it? What's the environment? Where the, what's causing the pain? Are you allowed to be in pain? Are you allowed to talk about your pain? These are things that have to be... These are important details. Because it's the only way to really open up, open up, open up. These places should not be swallowed up in the dark. They have to be visible. They have to be seen. They have to be acknowledged. They have to exist because they do exist. And maybe the pain is just too hard to feel. It's, we don't know what to do with it. We don't want it right now. It's going to screw up our life. You know, the life where we're cutting the pain off, that, that we have to have the pings. We have to have the red flags. We have to have this sensory, um, it's like people who can't feel their nerves, nervous system breaks a leg and is still trying to walk around and it's not working right. Well, we have a nervous system so, so we can feel the pain, so we can reconcile the broken leg, right? But if we 
take away the nervous system of our emotions, we have no idea what we're dealing with inside of there that's not getting looked at, is not getting mended, is not getting repaired. And then what are we becoming? We're becoming half dead people, you know, that are just sustaining themselves on what exactly? So these are all like super hardcore cues, super hardcore advice, help you navigate. I mean, I am so glad that we're exploring this, that you had the courage to request this because this, you need an avenue. You need the avenue for this because it's quite loud. It's quite, um, it's getting louder and louder and louder the more I'm present here. Which is good because we're, things are starting to flow. It's not like baby stepping our way into this scenario. <laughs> okay, I'm giving you a big hug. You're not alone. I understand what it feels like in these circumstances. And take that advice, okay? You gotta start somewhere. You gotta start somewhere and you have to take ownership that you can navigate this. You can choose to feel. Your pain matters too. Start working with a journal, start talking to yourself and start ma making sense of this and it will start to make sense, okay? And feel safe with who you are and how you feel. Don't cut yourself off. You gotta be who you are and how you feel. Otherwise, it's gonna turn you into a bitter person. It's gonna turn you into somebody you don't wanna be. That's not you. It's, you we need to get you back to your heaven, okay? This is the path. <laughs> All right. Big hug. Thank you very much for this. Thank you for letting me help you. <sighs> and for those watching, if any of you need some support, need me to look into anything, want some wisdom, some healing for your own life, you can book a session at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. All right. Have a great day, everybody.